Hi everyone. Well, it's a great pleasure to be to be today with you to discuss like the AI adoption in the region. So I'm Elodie, head of Ross and Strategy at Hub 71, which is the tech hub from Abu Dhabi government. Uh, it's a great honor as a French national, you know, to be back here to promote the work that we are doing in the region and in the Gulf. And uh, the point of today will be to give you more insights, you know, on how advanced is the Gulf, uh, especially the UAE and Saudi Arabia, you know, on first, um, of course, the, the creation, you know, of IP or on AI, but also the deployment and adoption of these new technologies, and especially how we can leverage, you know, and, and uh, this great neighbor to create a new type of economies and being able to diversify our economy away from oil and gas. So the, the, I think it would be great to have an introduction of our dear panelist, Marwa. Hello. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for the invite, first of all. Um, so I am Marwa Mansouri, a board member in Abu Dhabi Chamber of Commerce and Abu Dhabi Business Women Council. So we are the face and the voice of the private sector in Abu Dhabi. And the other thing that I do is I lead the digital transformation in Siemens Advanta. So we work um, in different projects, especially in the Middle East. Thank you. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, Ahmed Al Ghamdi, I'm the CEO and founder of Artificial Intelligence Global Company in Saudi Arabia. Uh, we focus on deployment, uh, on integration of digital technologies, AI based solutions uh, to the industrial sectors smart city sector as well. And before starting the company, I uh, used to work for Saudi Aramco for more than 28 years, leading also the start uh, and the strategy roadmap development of their digital transformation program. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Valérie Hollet. Like Elodie, I'm a French national, but I think you uh, heard it from my accent. Um, I've been in the Middle East since uh, 2006, and more recently I am uh, in charge of the Sorbonne Santa for Artificial Intelligence. Sorbonne has a campus in Abu Dhabi uh, since 2006, and recently we have set up this entity that is uh, basically an entity to bridge the gap between academia and the, and the private sectors. Uh, so we, uh, we build this Center of Excellence for Artificial Intelligence like uh, mirroring the entities that does exist in Paris. Um, hello, Youssef Khalili. I'm the Chief Commercial Officer of Autonomous Neom. I'm the President of Professional Services. Um, Autonomous Neom is a wholly owned company uh, by Neom. Neom is a giga city in Saudi Arabia uh, that's uh, known uh, for its uh, becoming the future of everything uh, around innovation, the future of how we live, work and play. Uh, Autonomous is the uh, IT and digital arm of Neom, where we imagine, design, build, and operate all those experiences uh, around AI, digital twins, uh, metaverse, extended reality, uh, generative AI, and other things. Uh, our focus is serving Neom, but now as a company, we are serving also the kingdom and beyond, and I'm happy to be here with you. Jean-Baptiste Fantin, I'm the CEO of uh, Nukai, which is a, a startup company uh, that uh, we launched in 2018. Um, we have the very modest goal of uh, creating a next generation AI, more collaborative and explainable and data efficient. And uh, we are 22 now, we are based in, in Paris. We have set up base in Singapore very recently and maybe in GCC in the, in the years to come. Yeah. <laughs> so as you can see, we have a very diverse panel and it will be very interesting, you know, to have like the, the vision uh, coming from different angles, from university R&D labs, you know, from the government, of course, from the private sectors, entrepreneurs. Um, so I think my first question will be for you, Mawa. It will be very interesting, you know, like we, we, we <clears throat> especially a couple of years ago, you know, when AI was not at that stage, thanks to generative AI, of that mass deployment, you know, a lot of people were wondering about the impact, especially on the position of women in the society. So how do you see, you know, that AI is impacting businesses in the UAE, and especially the one, like, owned by women? Sure. So if I can just structure the question in a way, in my opinion, artificial intelligence is such a heavy word, right? So what is artificial intelligence, in my opinion? Artificial is something that is predicted. 
something that is not real or you know depends on, on your understanding or it depends on the case and um, intelligence is knowledge it's expertise so if you make it very simple it's basically predicted knowledge right so moving forward in regards of this word everybody used to fear of this is a new industry we have international expertise who are better than us especially in the uae so the UAE decided to launch the first UAE national agenda for a strategy for AI. We have the first minister of AI in 2018. The next step was creating the first artificial intelligence office. Then after the regulating bodies were there, we have Mohammed bin Zayed University of AI uh, that is the first, that has a first graduate program for research and development. And as women here, you know, we feel safe to go into this business. We have a solid, um, a solid and stable ground. And this is the reason why almost 67% of women graduates this year reached to, to no, sorry, 77% uh, of women graduates are in STEM education. 56% growth in women implementing mergers and acquisition in their growth strategy in digital transformation. So it's not that um, the whole impact is not negative. The whole impact is we need a solid ground to prove ourselves. And this is what our leadership has done. And this is why you know anybody could take risks, but we have a safe ground to do it. So definitely I will uh, echo what uh, Mawa is saying, you know, sometimes people have a lot of bias, you know, regarding the Middle East. And we can see especially that in our uh, ecosystem, you know, our tech ecosystem, uh, more than 25% uh, of the founders are female. So there is a, a huge, like, female scene of entrepreneurs in the Middle East, which is growing. And it's true that it's very interesting to see how the different governments, you know, have been able to put a very safe framework to support, uh, to support that growth. Yeah, I just want to add uh, on similar numbers. I mean, uh, I was part of the, I mean, I was attending the graduation of uh, the second cohort of uh, MBZ UAI. I was invited to that uh, prestigious event and 30% on 50, 50, 50 uh, person cohort, 30% are women at a master degree, at a master of compu uh, um, computer vision, machine learning or uh, NLP and 30% uh, are actually women. And I think that's a great, uh, great success. Thank you. Um, Ahmed, can we now move, you know, on the, on the use cases, and especially can you explain us your journey? So you used to be with Saudi Aramco, which is definitely um, a huge player, a top player, especially regarding, you know, integration advanced technology you decided to create your own venture and your own company. So why this move and which are the use cases that you are currently you know, deploying in, in Saudi Arabia? Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, let me start by maybe answering the second question. Yani why the move to, uh, to the local market? Um, you know, this is driven by really the focus of Saudi Vision 2030 on digitalization. Uh, it was one of the strategic uh, you know, pillars of uh, Vision 2030 to uh, move into a knowledge, uh, you know, economy, uh, knowledge society, and also a knowledge, uh, you know, based, uh, digital-based nation. The government has, you know, uh, set a very ambitious program uh, to digitalize, uh, you know, the whole nation, uh, starting with the government services. Um, nowadays, uh, you know, uh, all what we need to do when it comes to government, you know, uh, business processes, they are all, you know, uh, uh, digital based. Uh, I never passed by any government office, maybe over the past five years, I can do all my work, you know, from my, uh, my office, my mobile. Uh, uh, the government also started, uh, you know, a, a major entity called Sadaya, the Saudi, you know, uh, Data and AI uh, Association, and they're driving, uh, you know, uh, really the digitalization at uh, nationwide, uh, and, and these are all really uh, enablers to uh, uh, promote more local entities uh, that can lead uh, in the digital front and the AI front. Um, 
In addition to that, uh, you know, there are uh, also uh, experiences that we gained in Saudi Aramco and working for uh, Saudi Aramco, uh, you know, the largest, you know, oil and gas company. Uh, they were uh, really leader in the digital transformation program. So when we started uh, back in 2016, we developed you know, a strategy company-wide, uh, a roadmap. And we have at that time came with uh, you know, a figure of almost you know, $4 billion uh, value return uh, from AI. Uh, now, and I don't want to speak on behalf of Saudi Aramco, but we see Aramco is really leading the digital transformation when it comes to industrial sector. They have programs even to uh, commercialize some of the technologies that they are uh, or they started. Uh, you know, the good thing about, you know, the AI and the digitalization, it's still at, you know, the, uh, the early stage of this technology evolution. So uh, this gave us the chance at Saudi Aramco, Saudi Arabia to, to really uh, build entities that can innovate, you know, create value, create solutions from the AI. Uh, and this is what we are doing. Uh, now, when it comes to use cases, uh, I will uh, just mention, you know, the data analytics as a top use case, you know, when it comes to value generation. Uh, many companies started to build data infrastructure. Uh, now, out of the data analytics, I can cite maybe three, you know, applications uh, for analytics uh, that are really top and, uh, when it comes to value generation. Uh, the first one is time series data analytics. So we see uh, in you know industry, oil and gas, uh, you know, focusing on uh, machine learning AI techniques uh, to uh, you know really do the data analytics, uh, generate uh, you know uh, huge value uh, when it comes to uh, predicting equipment failures, improving efficiency of the plants, and uh, improving also people productivity. Uh, data analytics, uh, when it comes to video and image uh, analytics, is also generating great value uh, when it comes to uh, safety uh, of people uh, in the workplace, monitoring, detecting anomalies when it comes to quality of uh, production uh, at manufacturing sites. Uh, and also, you know, the drone uh, video analytics uh, generate values from you know, inspection of elevated assets, uh, detecting anomalies, asset integrity, uh, gas, you know, leaks, uh, and when it comes to sustainability, quantifying emissions from the plants. I think the third, the last one is, is uh, you know, data analytics uh, for, uh, you know, uh, voice and, uh, you know, text analytics. So we see this also as another major, you know, application, especially in the banking sectors, uh, you know, uh, website applications. Uh, start to use, you know, chatbots and others. Thank you so much. So I think an important point, you know, for the French entrepreneurs who are uh, who are listening to us is that the Middle East is very advanced when we're talking about, like, you know, being able to access structured data. And on the other side, as we were saying, you know, because they are very young countries, you know, like they already moved to the next generation of type of manufacturing, part factories. So that's why it's very, like, it's a very interesting market, you know, for especially like blockchain AI to be able to have a very quick access, you know, to use cases. And I think that's also a very important point that adoption, you know, is not such a challenge because we are all working together, the private sector, the government, you know, universities, to be able to push that massive adoption. So that I think uh, a huge value proposition. So Valérie, I think uh, La Sorbonne is definitely a, a, a great testimony, you know, of the link between the French government and the UAE government. And um, of course, we could like uh, envisage this partnership, you know, um, having these different uh, programs, educational programs and exchanges, you know. But like you decided to also settle in Abu Dhabi, an R&D lab around AI. So can you give us more insight about what you do and why did you decide to do it in the UAE? Yes, um, so uh, first few uh, few words about uh, Sorbonne University in, here in Paris. It's the largest uh, French uh, university with uh, 50,000 uh, graduates every year. Um, it's also a very strong university in uh, mathematics and applied mathematics to AI. And uh, this is a capabilities that uh, we uh, wanted to bring to, uh, to the Middle East. 
Um, so with the strategic priorities that has been um, um, decided by the French government a few years back with the three, uh, the center of the three EA, um, it was decided to set up this, uh, this center of excellence in artificial intelligence, which is very much a translational center uh, to bring interdisciplinary to the field um, and uh, Sky Paris has now a network of uh, 350 researchers in many, uh, many labs, uh, robotics, epidemiology, uh, finance, I mean, any, uh, any uh, sectors that you can think of. Um, and uh, they are also uh, supervising about uh, 100 PhD students uh, every year. So we had this uh, pool of knowledge here and uh, the campus in Abu Dhabi that was starting to develop uh, science uh, in 20, uh, 27, 27, no, 2021, we opened the first bachelor in, uh, in AI, one of the first in the world. Um, so we decided to mirror this entity of uh, Sky Paris in Abu Dhabi, knowing that, uh, as um, Elodie has described, it's a very, um, a very buoyant environment for tech uh, for building uh, technology and uh, also because uh, the government, uh, the UIA government has put a lot of emphasis on education and research. So the center opened in two, 2022, 2020, sorry, time go fast. Um, and uh, with two, uh, two uh, research uh, chair of, uh, with industrial partners, so we have two uh, research chair, one with Thales and one with uh, Total, uh, one on computer vision and the second one on uh, physics in form uh, AI. Um, and we have the structure, so we have a team of uh, senior scientists, uh, PhD student, master student, and we are building on this. Uh, to develop more bridge to the private sectors and to bring the expertise and the knowledge from, uh, from France to the UIA and, um, and build on that. So we are also doing a very, very large uh, upskilling program with, uh, with some institution in, uh, in, uh, in Abu Dhabi uh, because the government has, uh, has really taken uh, it very seriously and they are upskilling their workforce so that what they, how, as, they, as they put it, that their people are above ALGO rather than below ALGO and be able to drive this digital uh, and this AI transformation. Thank you, Valérie. So let's go back to, to Saudi Arabia with Youssef. So Youssef, you're part of um, this, one of the most you know, amazing and futuristic smart city project, which is NEOM. Can you give us more insights on how Autonomous is trying you know, to support uh, application for smart cities for Neom? Absolutely. So Neom, as I said, it's, it's a big, uh, it's a big city. It's the size of Belgium, right? So uh, within Neom, we have multiple regions. We call them. So the line you've seen the announcement of the 170 kilometers city um, from the shore to the mountains. Um, you've seen the Trujina, the mountain resort, uh, hosting the Olympics, the Winter, Winter Olympics in 2029. Uh, multiple other industrial areas like Oxagon and uh, beachfront uh, resorts and as well as an island coming up um, uh, early next year, Sindala. So what happens is within the line we've organized multiple regions and multiple sectors and the sectors are like energy, water, uh, mobility, health, uh, sports, uh, um, you name it. So within the sectors, the sectors are working collaboratively and we're supporting them as well as the regions to make those regions within NEOM the, the, the cognitive future. So we lead with the narrative that uh, real time is too late and smart uh, is not smart enough. So what do we mean by that? We mean that you need to move from smart, which is based on sensors, based on five to 10% of data and a trigger and an event towards cognitive, which is being totally predictive, being anticipative, and being able to harvest more than 90% of the data within a trust model. Now, this is very difficult because, uh, first of all, systems are siloed, as we know. This is the big challenge within the data. But more importantly, people are afraid to share their data. And there are multiple acts around the world, and in Europe is a very active act around the data and so on. But we also have our own acts and policies within the region and in the kingdom. Now. We realize that to move from smart to cognitive, which is delivering experiences 
before people expect them rather than reacting on a certain event uh, is, is the way to go. So we've developed this whole uh, notion around uh, the future is cognitive and that's why we've mobilized multiple strategies and use cases across all our regions and sectors to imagine the future and then design and build and deliver the future. Most importantly now, uh, speaking about IP, Elodie, you mentioned um, there is a perception that in, in this part of the world, in the Middle East, in the GCC, that we are consumers of IP. This was the case until a few years ago. Uh, to your point, as Autonomous started now uh, over the last three years as a sector within NEOM, and then uh, over the last one and a half years since we were incorporated into a full-fledged company that is owned by NEOM and PIF, but uh, also operating across the region. I can happily tell you and share that we've invested in more than 20 platforms and IP points, uh, whether it's generative AI with our own LLM model in Arabic with Saudi dialects, whether it's in extended reality metaverse programs, whether it's in the digital twin, whether uh, it's in the uh, digital human we call Safana, which is an interaction layer, or multiple other platforms uh, called NEOS as a constellation, which is a federated data model that is designed exclusively to solve this problem of data trust and data sharing. These are IPs we've developed in Saudi Arabia, for Saudi Arabia and the region, and they are being looked at by multi multiple multinational companies to be adopted um, globally. From um, an impact, a direct impact of uh, AI uh, on the lives of the people, Neom is obviously a new city. We don't have many people living in Neom. We have a lot of people building Neom, but we don't have many people living yet in Neom. So what we are trying to do is we're trying to experiment some of those technologies on the people living, but more importantly, to use them in brownfield cities. So we're working with the, um, with the Riyadh city, with the Giga cities within Saudi Arabia, to try to implement those technologies and those use cases. Thank you so much. And I think, yeah, that's a very important point, you know, that shift where a couple of years ago we were still, like, as you were saying, uh, consuming IP. Why today, you know, thanks to the different labs and the huge universities, you know, and, and the talents in the countries, we are able, like, to create our own IP and with the support of the government be able to deploy them as fast as possible. So let's go back to France. Jean-Baptiste, we'd love to get your vision, you know, on the French side of AI. So you've been uh, uh, for a while supporting the French government, you know, on uh, everything linked to digital affairs, and you decided to launch your own ventures, Nunkai. So can you tell us more about it and why you decided to bridge that challenge? Well, we, we felt that uh, in two back in 2018 that uh, artificial intelligence that was mainly focusing on big data and uh, deep learning was uh, hitting a wall and that we needed to, to bring to, to, to build this next generation AI, as I said, more collaborative, more explainable, and especially data efficient, because it's a huge problem if everybody uses uh, methods that are very data consuming. There's a problem for, for the planet. So we decided to, to launch Nukai, and we, it's, uh, it, it's a typical approach. We decided to focus on a challenge, a man against human, uh, involving a game that's that's been done before. Everybody remembers uh, IBM um, uh, against uh, for chess. Uh, uh, more recently, Google uh, against a human for the game of Go and even poker. And we decided to, to with my co-founder Veronique, who is a woman, a researcher, and we decided to focus on the game of bridge. Not because we are uh, game uh, bridge addicts, which is true. But, uh, but also because um, the game of bridge was a hidden information game. You don't know, you have, you have a partner, you have, you have opponents. It's very tough. And the machines, the programs were nowhere were very bad at playing bridge. So we felt it was much more um, close to the reality, to real, uh, to real life. So uh, let's flash forward. Uh, last year, we, had, we hit our major milestone because we invited in Paris eight uh, bridge world champions and we beat them. So we had this moment, except that we, it was Nokia, it was not IBM, it was not Google, <laughs> and we are very proud of this, and we, we made our point, 
And also the AI we displayed was explainable. We could, uh, at each moment when the, the, the machine uh, produced a brilliant move, we could explain to the champions who thought we were cheating, but we, we could explain why uh, it, had, uh, it had made this move. So it, there was a strong transfer and trust uh, also. And, um, and it was um, the program we used, used uh, 200,000 less resources than AlphaGo. Um, so that was also, um, we were very proud of, uh, of this. So we couldn't, it was one year ago, but we couldn't relax because we had one major challenge ahead of us is how to transfer this to real life applications. And that's what we did. And we'd, we've been working very hard uh, in one year to transfer this to, because in Bridge you have an element of um, combinatorial complexity. So we transfer this to a very um, concrete use case uh, in transportation, but it can be also extended to logistics and, and other areas. And uh, we worked with a French company, airline company, which had a, a very tough problem they couldn't solve uh, using classic other, other methods. And uh, it's, uh, it's uh, related to crew scheduling pl planning. And uh, we realized that the complexity of the problem was like 10 to the power 1,000. So they would take 14 days to, for this process. It was not optimal. And we worked for, with them. We co-built a solution where now it takes two minutes instead of 14 days. And it's not optimal because you don't find the best solution in, to, in, in this huge search space. But you, you, you find a good solution. So we bring a lot of value. Um, it's a uh